Have you ever looked at a postal worker delivering mail and thought to yourself, is that a federal government job? Would you like to work for the post office or become a postal worker? Let's talk about it. First, understand that the post office is a business enterprise that receives no direct taxpayer funds. However, it is operated by the federal government. Most agencies that you will find out there, they're able to operate and function because of taxpayers. Well, in the post office, that's not the case. They receive revenue from selling postage stamps and other type of services, and that revenue is supposed to provide for their operating expenses. Now, the USPS is supposed to provide annual salaries, pension funds, and benefits to its workers. And it's doing this with the revenue that it collects from its services. So does it make enough money to cover all of these costs? Well, no, it does not. In the last decade, it has lost billions of dollars. One main factor is due to the rise in email and other digital communication. People are not sending letters quite as often anymore. And if you look back 20 to 30 years ago, you will see a steep decline in the amount of letters and postal services that are being used. Today, the USPS has over 600,000 employees but not all of them are your letter carriers. So USPS employees are technically federal government employees under the executive branch of the federal government. But the US Bureau of Labor Statistics does not consider postal workers federal employees because the Postal Service is a quasi-federal agency. Employees are broken down to two main categories, the career and the non-career. Also, there are unions. Not just one, but there are seven unions that have bargaining agreements. Most of the benefits of this type of job are similar to your federal employee. They have the health insurance, they have a TSP, they have pension, they have leave. But a couple of the key differences is the condition in which you're working in and the hours that you will be working. The rural letter carrier appears to be equal to the federal wage system or the WG grade and they are paid on an hourly basis. Even though it is similar to the federal wage system, they do not follow the WG pay scale. In fact, there's a completely different pay scale for postal workers. Another big difference is the way that you search for USPS jobs. You will not find them on usajobs.gov. Instead, you will have to navigate to usps.gov and filter by location and area. I will leave a link below if you're interested. Let's take a look at a few job announcements. In the state of Virginia, I found multiple listings under the delivery and customer service area. This looks to be a rural carrier associate. This would be the person that's actually delivering the mail to your mailbox. And they're walking outside in the elements getting this task accomplished. The position has a listed salary of $19.06 per hour. Now, you and me both know where minimum wage is at. It's not too far away from that $19 an hour mark. So essentially you're looking at getting paid a lower wage in order to do this type of work. Also, we can notice that on this job announcement, this is a non-career position and you'll be required to take a virtual exam along with a drug test in order to be eligible for this position. Now, I will look at a different job position in the same area, the same state, but we're gonna go away from the letter carrier and look at a career position. This listing was found under the IT area. This looks to be a system analyst position. So think about office environment, working, sitting at a desk, analyzing information on a computer. The position has a salary of 89,000 to 107,000 a year. And this is a lot better than your $19 an hour. Looking at this type of position, I would say it's the rough equivalent of a GS-12 position. For this career position, you will have to undergo a background check, a drug test, and there's also veterans preference when you're applying. Also keep in mind, when you click that apply button, you will be transported to a screen that invites you to sign up. You have to create yourself an account. Now I did this myself and it took about 10 minutes in total. All right, so let's look at a different area. Let's go to Austin, Texas. From the delivery and customer service area, I found another carrier position, which is titled city carrier assistant. And this announcement straight up tells you that you may be required to work any day of the week, which includes weekends and holidays. Also, this is a 360 day term appointment. So there is no guarantee that after a year, you will keep that position. 
they can just kick you to the curb. So right off the bat, we have a potentially poor work-life balance and we have the instability of knowing that we might not get reappointed after a year. So how much does this position pay? Well, the salary for this type of position is $18.92 an hour. This is even lower than the last carrier position. So you can look at this as a way to perhaps get your foot into the door to gain some type of experience, but you will have a hard time having a life in this country by earning $18 an hour. The requirements include a driver's license. Also, you're going to have to take that virtual exam and a drug test. The next listing was under processing operations and the title is electronic technician. So what would this person do? Well, mainly diagnostic and preventative maintenance on any type of postal work operating equipment. This could be a computer. This could be any type of machine that helps conduct those type of postal operations. This is a career position and the salary is listed at $65,000 a year. This might be the bottom level and there is no top level that's identified from the job announcement. What's interesting about this position is that it lists Tuesdays and Wednesdays as your days off. And the work hours are from 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. Now compare this to your average GS job where you have the weekends off and you're working during the hours of daylight. So you're not working night shifts usually. It definitely looks like this is a nighttime job. Also, the exams and tests are similar to the other positions. Next, let's go over to Florida. We have a rural carrier associate position in Lake Placid, Florida. This position looks to be pretty similar to the one we saw in Virginia. The duties are the same and the salary is pretty much the same at $19 an hour. This position stays pretty much consistent no matter where you look in the country. All right, next we have a maintenance mechanic in Jacksonville, Florida. You will have to have a deep mechanical knowledge in order to be qualified for this job, but you could have picked up this skill set at another job, or perhaps you were a mechanic in the military and your skills can transfer. This is a career position and it has a starting salary of $48,000 a year, which is currently below the national average. You will have Monday and Tuesday off with a work schedule of 2.30 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is eight hours. Taking a step back, let's look at a job at the Postal Service versus a traditional GS or WG government job, which would be better. In the traditional government job, you will find a stronger work-life balance and a higher pay. So why would you want to work at the USPS? Well, there's a few reasons. Maybe it's the only organization hiring in your area right now and you don't want to move. Or number two, you would like to have that extra exercise when you're going to work and walking might keep you in shape. So that could be an incentive. Third is you like the idea of having a pension and those benefits and you're willing to take a lower salary and lower pay in order to have those benefits. Other than that, I would suggest and recommend to anyone to look at usajobs.gov first or to look at your local state government jobs. If you would like to learn more about federal government jobs versus state government jobs, check out this video next. Would you ever consider working a postal job or have you worked for the post office or the USPS? If you have, let me know your experiences down below. If you want more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.